Howdy everybody, welcome on into the cargo bay where it's time for a little bit of Hobby Talk. Hobby Talk! How you doing, VC? I'm doing good. A little self-conscious about my intro there, but other than that, <laughs> I feel alright. <laughs> I thought it was good. I appreciate that. <laughs> I've been putting some post-processing effects on our on our Hobby oh, Talks. So I, I have know noticed that'll... a little, <laughs> little extra zing on yeah. there. It's been nice. Yeah, so I think I think that will really ring ring well uh, after I it's got some echo that. on it. Excellent. Be- see, we've got a busy day Ooh, today oh in the cargo goodness. bay. Yeah, the slides are full today. Yeah, this is a long um, requested and uh, long put off <laughs> video Dang. for the cargo bay. <laughs> <laughs> Not because we don't enjoy sketch cards, just because uh, there's a lot to cover. It's a complicated and wide-reaching topic is sketch is. cards so and we're gonna hit every single aspect today perfectly. <laughs> yeah that we're definitely it's it's too broad for us to cover everything we're gonna do our best to do an overview and hey if you're not interested in the sketch card portion of the show for some reason jump on over to the news portion at the end of the episode but before we get there bc i want to thank everybody who's been liking and subscribing means a lot because bc we finally have reached the point where we've got some haters in the cargo bay yeah <laughs> let the hate flow through you with your <laughs> thumbs down we love the engagement sorry suckers the, <laughs> the thumbs down actually works to our advantage <laughs> but uh along our, our pristine record of only thumbs up for many months was uh yeah. i noticed I noticed all most of our videos got one thumbs down on the same day, so I think we we might have upset someone at Papa Tops. Uh, Ooh, Father Phonetics, phonetics watching, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, and if it's you watching this right now, I just want you to know I cried myself to sleep that night. Yeah, so it really I hope hurt. You my feel feelings. good about yourself. Hurt my feelings, but we yeah. do appreciate it. taking the time to leave a like. It does does help a lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, BC, I guess let's jump right into the. The wide world of sketch cards. Let's do it. All right, here we go. I think. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, BC sketch cards are, of course, hand drawn. Um, you know, cards inserted randomly in packs of top Star Wars trading cards. Um, and as far as I can tell, the first set to do this was the 2004 Clone Wars set. Um, that's. I may be wrong about that, but it's kind of hard to find information about sketch cards. Uh, you know, they're kind of an elusive quantity, uh, and yeah. that's part of the fun, right? It is, yeah. And I remember, so 2004 Clone Wars, for all you who don't know, is the the Gindy yeah. animated, the hand animated style, predating, of course, our our CG well beloved 2008 Clone Wars. Um, and you, I remember you opened one of these hobby boxes way back in the day and pulled a sketch from from that box. I did, BC. I think we've got an image of that coming up. Uh, it was quite the experience. These boxes are harder to come by now. Uh, yeah. That was back when you could get vintage boxes of Star Wars cards for not too much money. Um, but a, a lot of Star Wars card sets, including budget sets, have sketch cards. They've mm-hmm. typically gotten rarer over time. Yeah. Um, and they've also, they vary widely, like the, the 2004 Clone Wars, those are, those are quick sketches. And a lot of times you'll see the same face of Palpatine, you know, drawn individually, right. but like, it's basically the same sketch over and over and over. Um, and now we've reached a point where most sketches are, are truly like one of one, you know, concepts or have some degree of variation to them. Yeah, true. I mean... It's really evolved from 2004 into, I mean, works of art, and we're going to highlight a lot of that. But the style, the the way that artists have like embraced the what I would say the medium of a tiny trading card has been really impressive to see how some of them have taken that on uh, as as the years have gone by. Um, just piggyback off what you said too; they are becoming a little more rare we're not seeing as many sketches as we were seeing for a while part of it's because tops isn't always great with their artists part of it is they're printing a lot more than they used to so yeah. being able to guarantee x amount of sketch cards is just not feasible based off of you know 
human ability to create that much art within a given amount of time and how much product is being made. So uh, it's definitely something I would like to see more of because I personally have never pulled a sketch card out of anything that I've opened. And you are going to show off later your bounty. You're just going to put me to shame with all of your pack pulled sketch cards. I've got, I've got a few of them, BC. Uh, you know, these are now typically kind of case hits, meaning like yeah. a case of boxes, you'll have one sketch card or even multi case hits where it's like, I remember some products, it's like, wow, there's a sketch in one of every three cases. Yeah. Um, so it just depends. I wanted to highlight, you know, Star Wars Illustrated, I believe had a high number of sketch cards in it. I'm not super familiar with that set. Um, and then, of course, there is the Stellar Signatures line, which Ooh. I don't even understand because I know there are reproductions of the sketches and Stellar yeah, Signatures. Because they're so limited. They do the limited reproduction, and then you get the one giant, like, hand-painted, okay. hand-done, like, true work of art that comes in it. And then they reproduce all of those handmade art pieces into the giant box that you get i mean it's an insane price i mean these are like it's like what ten thousand dollars for a box of this stuff where you get 40 autographs and the original art and then the reproduction of the sketch set like the art is all really cool but like buy the ones you like secondhand because this product is just to me inaccessible it's cool to see someone open it but it's like I'll never know what that's like because it's so expensive. Yeah, we're blaster boys here in the cargo bay. We yeah. got a modest budget. So sorry for getting bogged down there for a second. Yeah. Maybe look <laughs> elsewhere for that information. Uh, you'll find sketch cards and all kinds of products. And BC, here is a uh, here is every sketch I have pulled out of a box of cards. Two of these came out of blasters, BC. How about that? Blasties. Yeah, you got... So there is the Palpatine sort of quick one-off. I mean, that's just a... Seems like a very fast line sketch. Right? I love like, it so much, though. <laughs> yeah. Love it. But it's like, what what expectations would artists have had when it's the first time they're doing? They're like, you want me to do a sketch card? Do you know what a sketch is to an artist? A sketch usually takes like five minutes, maybe. Like if you talk about a sketch, if you look at that Akbar that you have there or the Ahsoka, those are not sketches. No, no. those are those are legit. Uh, I mean. Th- the rest of them, all of them yeah. beyond that, are more than just line art. You know what I mean? There's, there's detail, there's inking, there's color. Like all of those elements are going into those sketch cards. So you do get a good like kind of side by side of what it originally was to the evolution of. I mean, I, I I don't even think you can call it a sketch card. It's an art card. You know what I mean? Like these aren't just sketches. I think we need to get that kind of straight. Like yeah. there there is artistry that's going into these and mixed media. To, yeah. This is like, a, the see, Ahsoka paint? Is, is paint. There's paint yeah. on the back yeah, of that yeah. card, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, the and I believe that that crystal and fox from the Last Jedi. I think that's colored pencil. Um, the the porg appears to be marker. I think that the Akbar, uh, which I I love that card. I love all that of these cards. Amazing. I think it's a, yeah. a great. I plan on keeping all of the sketches I ever pulled because it's kind of a cool representation of my yeah. time in the hobby. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I am particularly fond of that that Akbar, um, and I love that border. I know that the artist uh, listed there is Space Hindu, um, uh, Neil Sharma, I believe is his name. Apologies, we're gonna maybe mispronounce a lot of names. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, I genuinely do apologize, but. Uh, did a set for Star Wars Galaxy 2021, all with that border on it. Uh, they're all really cool. Um, and that I do want to mention that Clone Wars set. There are a few sketches by by Gindy himself, the yeah. creator of the show and the, the you know creator behind I believe behind Samurai Jack. Also directed you know Powerpuff Girls episodes, Dexter's Lab episodes. So that is a true Grail card for me. Is like mm-hmm. uh, some somewhere out there. There are some of those. Gindy sketches. Yeah. Uh, Gindy yeah. Tartovsky, I believe. Again, yep. just scared of mispronouncing things. Um, yeah, that, that would be cool to have a, an official Gindy from the 2004 Clone Wars. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, BC, it's not really about, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love getting these, 
these incredible sketches that it's like, wow, someone spent a long time working on this. I also like getting the kind of quickly done sketches. It's just a cool idea to me that like, hey, someone sat down and drew this. And mm-hmm. in the case of opening that box of Clone Wars, like a long time ago, someone yeah, yeah, drew yeah. this and it's been sealed in a pack until I, you know, opened it. Uh, yeah, it was almost two decades that card was waiting to find yeah, you. Yeah. And it certainly did, my boy Palpatine. Uh, yeah. So there's some examples of pack pulled sketch cards. Of course, um, that brings us to another. Oh, I, I have this graphic here. I wanted to mention that Star Wars card collectors on Facebook. Um, there's a lot of avid uh, sketch collectors. There's a lot of good information there. That's not an invitation for you to join that group and hound people <laughs> in, in that group for information. But if you're really interested in finding out who an artist is, a lot of the artists are in that group. Um, if yep. you want general information on sketch cards, uh, there's a lot of sketch focus posting there. Um, yeah. So it's a it's, it's a, very, a good place to be. It is I, a very good resource for that. Yeah, I despise Facebook, but I do have a kind of <laughs> fake account that I use just to be on yep. that group. So, all right. Anyway, as I was saying, artist proofs, AP cards, BC. Yeah, so this uh, conceptually is how artists really get paid by <laughs> Papa Tops. Because um, Papa Tops only gives them what, like three dollars a card or something yeah, heinous uh, for them. yeah I, I i think it varies from from artist to artist but from what i've seen in the card collector star wars card collector group a lot of times artists are saying that yeah it's around three dollars per card which if you're asking someone to do an akbar level style is a, an insane thing to say hey can i have that for three dollars yeah. uh, if i were the artist i'd say absolutely not uh, so what Tops does is they say, well, we'll let you keep the artist proof, which is just essentially like a, a blank version of the card. Or they'll send some of the ones you've done back to you um, that you can then essentially resell for much higher than the three dollars that Tops is willing to pay you for that. Um, so you'll see these sometimes come up in the group where um, or on eBay too, where artists are selling their cards as artist proofs. So that just means essentially these aren't coming out of the packs. These are what is returned to them as essentially their form of payment. Uh, so if you do see those artist proofs, support an artist. Buy buy that card directly from them. Super cool. Yeah, and uh, I would like to say I pulled this image from eBay. I don't know if this Matt Maldonado sketch is being sold from his official eBay account. Um, another thing you'll see is is people buying directly from artists and then listing that on eBay for much more money, which is, you know, kind of kind of a bummer, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of a mega bummer, not yeah. something I enjoy. But, uh, you know, there are various reasons that that yeah. artists do sketch cards. Um, it's not, you know, always for the base pay and maybe they have a higher negotiated base pay. But in general, uh, a great way to support an artist and get something of a high quality that you want is to get an AP directly from them. And then you have it on the official card stock. It can go in your set. Um, so it can get hard to distinguish. Uh, was this a pack pulled card? Is it an AP? Most artists list their, you know, APs as APs, I think. But yeah. it's also possible that you'll come across a card um, that's being sold as pack pulled and you never know if it was or not. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so moving on. You can get commission cards, BC. This is my collection of commission cards. Um, well, who's the fantastic artist that you would commission to do that? Well, there's someone that I really, uh, really appreciate their style and their work. Uh, goes by the name of BC. BC. Oh my gosh! You made these cards for me, and I think you they're... embarrass me with this slide. <laughs> you embarrass me. I think this is a great way to showcase. The potential of commissioning an artist to do artwork for you because here i have you know some kind of standard stuff that i just appreciate like these visions characters or or that Thai bomber or that that akbar you know warner herzog there's something that i just want in my collection and then also stepping outside of the lines <laughs> something i can't get from the normal market something that tops and disney wouldn't improve in their product which is something like ernest p worrell as a jedi <laughs> or, or or luke skywalker in the moment where he catches the lightsaber suddenly having sunglasses on or or my buddy kyle katarn up there yeah uh the ernest p Worrell goes to the jedi temple is <laughs> we we're sadly we'll never get to see that film but uh in it's in my head canon for sure 
<laughs> he's too stupid to begin the training. <laughs> um, so yeah, you'll see, you know, um, there's, there's a lot of movement interactivity on, on different Facebook groups and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, fan pages for artists of like, Hey, this is something that I'm never going to get out of a Toth's product. They refuse to make a perfect Kyle Katarn card. Can you make me one? And also people have sketch cards made for sketch -a graphs which is when you do a sketch of a character and have, you know, the person who yeah. played the character autograph it. Um, I would, I would highly recommend anyone who's in, like find out an artist you like, go on Facebook, go on their Instagram. A lot of them are, are taking commissions, you know, if they, if they have those bookings available and, reach out to them. It's a great way to support artists is to say, hey, I really dig your stuff. Would you do a card of, you know, this character for me? It is, I, I think going through those like platforms, looking at their work, finding who you like, you know, is a great way to kind of start building that collection. That's a great point, BC. And I'm, I'm not sure what we got on the next slide, but I'm clicking it. <laughs> it is it is, of course, the star, the current leading yeah. man, perhaps, in the <laughs> Star Wars sketch card world. Angel Avila is here, uh, has has risen to massive popularity as a sketch card artist um, and is now kind of a, a tops, you know, endorsed poster child. Poster man, poster, yeah. poster person. He, He's an adult. It's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, obviously does incredible work. Um, yeah. And kind of the story here, at least from my perspective, is you saw, you know, people pulling cards from him, being amazed. And then eBay prices kind of skyrocketing. Uh, transition into top saying, Hey, you're really popular. <laughs> you know, can we, can we maybe work with you on a more personal basis? Again, this is all just me from the outside looking in, but, uh, this is one of the, the most popular artists, uh, creating sketch cards right now. Yeah. No, no uh, no hidden secret as to why, if we look at the, uh, the images on here, uh, they're amazing. I mean, these are done on trading cards, so the detail that they're able to get on multi-characters on a sketch card is mind-boggling. Um, so the the Ahsoka and Mando and IG, this was sold as an as artist proof by uh, Mr. Aviles recently and was... A lot of bids and went for, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of six thousand uh, dollars as a true like work of art. Um, the other one, the Vader, Yoda, and Luke, also had several bids. I think this was in the neighborhood of five thousand uh, dollars on a final sale. And then even like the other characters that that we've got showcased there, like the droids and the smaller characters. I love those because it's like the scale work of of them being positioned on the card is it like it truly blows my mind how he does this like his work is mind-blowing uh mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of no surprise to me that like when people see this they go goo goo over it you know like it yeah. is it is breathtaking work yeah yeah and the the character of the of even you know the mouse droids uh brought yeah. to life there's just uh you know Dude does incredible work, um, yeah. and from what limited you know, <laughs> limited knowledge I have of him, seems like a cool guy. So yeah, uh, very cool. And of course, you know, when someone pulls one of these sketches out of their their box of cards, it's like, you know, it's better than an autograph hit, a, a huge autograph hit. You know, yeah. in most cases, oh, yeah. it's like, wow, I just pulled a little mini artwork out of my pack of yeah. cards. Um, so yeah, you'll you'll see Angel Avila's work um, all over the place, and um, yeah, so that's why he's featured here. We're gonna feature a few more prominent artists, and I also think a uh, quick production uh, meeting here. I think if we want to like feature an artist with some semi regularity too, is this much as they like, hey, check out this person's yes. art. Yes, or if you're an artist or know an artist or uh, want to share an artist. Drop it in the comments. Let us know. We are always happy to feature artists and support artists. Um, so if there's another artist you think we should feature on a future episode, hit us up. We'd be happy to do it and share some work. Um, but yeah, we do have a few more that we wanted to highlight just as like the initial intro into uh, or overview of, of sketch card stuff too. All right, moving on, BC. Um, here we have an artist who has done some work for the, the Stellar Signatures yeah. series. Um, 
Uh, Louise Draper, beautiful stuff here, BC. I've also included one of these reproduction cards, um, yep. just so you can see kind of like, ah, uh, they do like a canvas thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's got a nice like frame on. I mean, the 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 reproductions of the original art are cool, but I mean, if you look at the at the moth over there, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's the real deal. Like, I think it's like maybe like five by seven. It's it's large, uh, but that's like the original work of art. Um, so that like it's that level of detail and quality, which is why those boxes are a bajillion dollars. Um, and in the middle is just an example of this was noted on on their artist Facebook page as like commissioned work that they did. So this is a great example of APs. They probably would have had the those blank returns. And then someone said, hey, I want to Luke and Leia. And then they did this, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, and we'll have links to uh, official pages um, in, in the description of this episode. Yeah, yeah, just stunning stuff here, VC. Very cool. Uh, check this out. Another mega star um, here, <laughs> Carlos Caballero. Um, man, some cool sketches I've seen over the years um, coming from him. And uh, yeah. One of the official artists on the living set. Uh, yes. Carlos Caballero, as is our, our next featured artist. Uh, not surprising why Tops uh, wanted them to, you know, do weekly work uh, of the highest quality. Uh, another thing uh, about sketches, sometimes it's not just one. You'll get a booklet yeah. or a triptych, which gives the artist even more room to just blow your mind with what they can do uh, on a small, you know, smaller scale uh, like this. Luke Vader and Obi Wan that we've got here, which is, I mean, I could just stare at it, and we could stop recording the episode and then come back, and I'd probably still be staring at it. Uh, <laughs> truly amazing. Right, it'll be the most viewed too. part of our video. Yeah. It's the part where we just have our mouths shut. <laughs> <What's>... <laughs> yeah, this... yeah. Carlos Caballero is routinely one of the most sought after sketch card artists, but it is. Hard at work weekly for the living set too. Beautiful use of light and color, and yeah, BC yeah. the the booklet sketches. There are a lot of different formats of sketches. You'll also see sometimes puzzle sketches where you'll get what is clearly half an image, and then the other yeah. is somewhere out there in another pack somewhere. Yeah. So that becomes a quest for someone, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes for many yeah. years of like, yeah. do you have the other half of this sketch? I need the rest of the puzzle. <laughs> if you yeah. do, we'll fight over who gets to keep it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And something else I'd like to mention, just something that happens seemingly a lot is, well, not a lot, but definitely more than once I've seen it where someone will have two sketch cards stuck yeah, together yeah, yeah. because there's some paint. So they'll pull a pack, and if you do that, make sure you watch a video before you go ripping the sketches <laughs> apart. And maybe yeah. there's like some some good methods involved. But but yeah, exciting stuff. Either way, I'm I'm dying someday to find that super thick the, <laughs> three the double. Fold. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the the or the one that does have the the medium has bound it together with a companion piece. You know, yeah, like, oh, a little extra sketch. Um, moving sketch. We're we're throwing yeah, this yeah. sketch word around so loosely right now. I mean, that's what they're called. They're called sketch yeah. cards in the product, but yeah, it's uh, these are paintings at this point. Yeah, uh, whatever the medium is used to create these, these are these are paintings as far as I'm yeah. concerned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Hanging in the Louvre, you know. <laughs> Here we are, BC. Another one of our living set artists, uh, Chris Pinnix. Is that correct, BC? Correct. I don't yep. know, Chris Pinnix. Yep, um, I believe Chris Pinnix. I I was recently gifted this ice spider uh, by a friend of the show, Sam Sams, because I missed it in my living set collection. Was very pleased. Uh, you know, does incredible work for the living set. Look at these. Look at these sketch cards, Ooh. BC. Ooh. You know, I'm, I love I'm my getting, vehicles. I'm telling you that whenever I saw that one, I was like, well, we better feature that because that thing is sick as hell. Um, and then the. The Boba Fett too, great use of color on that, that that blue background, so stark, like contrasting to the front of the image. I'm just like, yeah, they know what they're doing. These are really great. Yeah, super cool. And uh, BC, uh, I think we have one more artist here. We do. Marsha Parkins, I wanted to highlight because Marsha has in the past been really active on that group. Um, and this is one of my personal 
regrets mm. in collecting is there have been a couple um, of Marsha Parkins cards that came up for sale where I'm like, why didn't I get that? <laughs> why didn't <laughs> why did I get that dumb dumb stupid parallel <laughs> instead of getting one of <laughs> one of her incredible <laughs> works of art? <laughs> um, like uh, man, just just really cool stuff. Um, Marsha Parkins, I believe at least for a while had a subscription service where you could subscribe like through Patreon or something else and get like monthly sketch cards or oh. something directly from her. Um, but That's awesome. A lot of cool commissions and um, also just a huge fan of, you know, Star Wars Visions season one, episode one. Yeah. And just some cool cards I, I wanted to show off. I remember seeing those whenever they came up. I was like, those are great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I mean, the art style of Visions in like to begin with is a great starting point. But having an art, you know, an artist who can capture that in sketch card form is something else, too. It's just like great stuff. Uh, yeah. Eye catching work. Also, I know she has some work in at least one Star Wars Galaxy set um, as, you know, like regular base cards, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So and I think that's probably true for for multiple sketch card artists is that they have art that has been featured in Star Wars Galaxy as a, a regular card. Um, again, sorry for the lack of knowledge. It's a big subject, and I think we're done. No, we're not, BC, because we got to talk about controversy and oh, counterfeits. Just, oh, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, when I say controversy, I just mean, you know, maybe Tops should be a little more supportive of artists yeah. always. Um, at least that's my point of view. Maybe things are getting better. Maybe things are getting worse. I'm not an artist. I don't know, but there sure is a lot of discussion about it. Uh, there Popular is an internet and and most of it is not of uh the highest order in terms of the the pay the treatment the communication uh that they get from tops a lot of that is is rushed or hurried which is i would imagine uh certainly a frustration for an artist who takes great pride in their work uh as i would imagine all uh artists are who are working for tops uh in some degree so yeah hey Tops, treat your artist better. Yeah, and Pay that's, more. <laughs> that's us saying this, and we're completely unaffiliated with, with yeah, any of the artists we're, themselves. So yeah. <laughs> we're we're bad mouthing you as a third party. We are, so. and we'll continue to bad mouth you, Papa Tops, until you offer to pay us money to. to yeah, die. <laughs> until you pay for our silence. <laughs> Stop disliking our videos. <laughs> yeah, we know it's you. We know it's the official tops that can't go through and getting that thumbs down. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, a lot of artists find reason to do this and they find value in doing this. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but just in general, we're on the artist side of things here yeah. in the cargo bay. And uh, I did want to mention, beware, counterfeit sketches. Uh, they're out there. Uh, there's been... Recent, you know, because of the high sales on some of these cards, you'll see I've even heard of forgeries happening, you know, like Jeez. that is like a thing that apparently happens. But something that definitely happens is someone will pull a sketch card, maybe one done in pencil or something in a lighter artwork and just paint over it. Um, so they'll take an artwork that existed, paint over it with something that looks better, quote unquote, to then sell it for a higher price. Um that's annoying. Yep. Yeah, really <laughs> frustrating. So, I mean, I get it. It's hard to make money as an artist. I understand that, but uh, being a, a jerk, <laughs> you know, that I understand. I'm less. not for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and another controversy is, again, people, you know, buying sketches and then reselling them for inflated prices on eBay. Uh, I've seen yeah. that be a frustration, a reoccurring frustration with artists is like, hey, yeah. Someone got this commission card, paid me this much, and now they're trying to flip it, which is just kind of lame, you know? Like, hey, I think you're an a-hole! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, you know, the best way to avoid all of this is to buy direct when you can. Yes. Um, obviously, you know, it's it. there are going to be times out there where you want a card that exists, and you're going to buy it on eBay, that's fine, whatever. I'm just saying, be aware. Uh, make sure yeah. you're trying to be a decent human being out there. 
Yeah, it bothers me. It bothers me less if it's a pack pulled thing yes. for yeah, some reason, absolutely. as opposed to I bought it from the artist and then decided to jack up the rate and turn a profit. Yeah, I think you're a scumbag. Yeah, um, but you know, pack pulled to me is a little bit different. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with selling a yeah. sketch, including one that you had commissioned, if it doesn't fit your collection anymore. I just mean there is. There is has been on purpose, like I'm going to buy sketch cards at this discounted rate and yes. use it to make and a that, profit for myself yeah. very quickly. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, yeah, I was quick to my scumbaggery, but I think you've clarified uh, what I do think is total scumbaggery in this situation. <laughs> Yeah, you know, hey, art is a thing. You can invest in art. Uh, maybe if you find an artist and you, sure, you buy a bunch of their their commissions at a hundred dollars while they're cheap, and in five years you you make a profit or whatever. I'm I'm not. I'm just judging you if you're a jerk, and you know you're a jerk. All right, <laughs> you know you're a jerk yeah. in your heart if you're a jerk. Yeah. Well, I went to the jerk store and they ran out of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, this is a great show, PC. Oh, we're doing so good. <laughs> we're really bringing the heat and Should the thunder out today. Here? It's almost Let's like move. I was avoiding this topic for a reason. <laughs> Here's the deal. Support artists. Sketch cards are cool. Let's move on to the yes, living indeed. set and continue talking about artists. <laughs> yes, here we are, BC. We've got our new characters, which are Rio Chuchi. <laughs> And Senator Ghani Reduli. Yes, we've got some Clone Wars, <laughs> some bad badge going on this week. Uh, and I see you listed the price there. Very nice. Or if you want to not support Papa Tops, go on eBay and buy it for cheaper. As we always say, you can get them on eBay cheaper from people buying in bulk, and maybe you'll be less likely to get a 10 out of 10 or whatever. But these cards are all pretty nice. Uh, so, Do you think... This portion of the show is why Top sends us the thumbs down on the weekly, just because we tell them not to buy from Top, and they're like, "No, I think it's buy a, from us." I think it's the the segment where we just fly the logo across the screen and make fart noises. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? That's Tops. That's what Top sounds like sometimes. No, yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, I. I buy a lot of these cards direct, or used to buy a lot of these cards direct from Tops. Uh, so you know, it's a you know, it's nice Do to get them direct. Maybe you'll get a ten out of yeah. ten. Do you think? I mean, and, and Tops knows this is going on. That's why they'll sell you a discount rate if you buy yeah, yeah. A, a million of them, because the yeah. leg works on you to sell those over time. <laughs> Distribute I don't think them. We're, yeah. I don't think we're making anybody upset. I hope not. Uh, but nah. yeah, cool, cool images. Um, don't remember who these characters are, but. You know, they're cool. They're great. Um, all right, BC, we've got some polls here. Classic Cargo Bay polls. One of my favorite parts of the show these days. Yeah, we've got the Do You Collect Top Star Wars Living Set cards. Uh, we got a, a 51% said, nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, we got a 6% said, I'm all in, going for a complete set. Nice. I salute you. Yeah. Amazing. Um, we've got uh, 37%, which is I pick up some of the cards that I like. That's firmly where I fall into. Uh, and then what is the top Star Wars living set uh, with a 6% of the vote? Um, go see previous slide yeah. for yeah, that the... one if you're the person who voted that you We're on. We're in the 500s now. Is that correct, BC? The slide was the just billions. Up. 600 millions it's well, a the, lot two cards come out a week and have been coming out, out every week for several years and that's what the living set is it is print on demand so this week was 449 and 450 and pc as i've always known the deeper we get into this set the more i think about wow if i would have gotten in on day one think about what a beautiful shelf oh because God. these cards look great i mean they're just they're beautiful well cards. they they took the iconic 77 series one border and uh -huh. they coupled it with amazing, brilliant artwork and, and higher print every, quality and great print quality and every character you could possibly think of and love and are continuing to make and uh, has been going on for a long time now. And when I found out about this, I was like, I'll never catch up. It's going to be too expensive. So yeah. I'll pick up the ones that I can 
when I can. Yeah, it's a fun way to... They're not too expensive, even going pretty far back if you're not looking for a PSA 10. So I tried to focus my collection for a while. I'm just going to pick up the droids, I said. Mm -hmm. Or I'm just going to pick up Andor. And that's kind of just turned into... You know what? I like a lot of these. I'm going to wind up getting a lot of them. But uh, yeah, they're, they're cool cards. I do believe they... They made the card stock a little crummier uh, at some point during last year. There was a, they became a little thinner. Um, and, but, you know, whatever. They, they still look great. Uh, so, interesting. interesting to see where everybody stands. Moving on, BC, to how do you focus your trading card collection? How that? Um, yeah, I thought that was a good one. Just get kind of a, a, a feel for what's out there. We got 21% saying, I collect specific sets. I dig it. I've got 13% saying, I collect specific characters. Also dig that. Nobody focuses on first appearances, which I think is a lie. I know you're out there. There's some, I know you there's first some appearance folks out there. Are out there. That's all right. You don't have to know about the polls. They don't watch um, this deep into the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, ah, eight minutes is good. Um, I'm set. <laughs> <laughs> Leave my thumbs down. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drop, drop some hate and go. Uh, we got most people say, I don't worry about having a focus. I collect whatever I like. I dig it. We got 3%, which is other, which is cool. Yeah, I, I do kind of fall into the majority. I, I don't normally have a specific focus, or I do feel like my focus more accurately shifts from, from moment to moment. Where yeah. It's like, you're like us, you're Blaster Boys, you're working on a budgie. Uh, you know, maybe you're looking at specific things that you're collecting. You know, maybe you're not just gobbling up everything, but it's like, oh, I'm going to focus on green parallels from Legacy that are rebel specific. And that was a, like a hyper focus. But I could also be looking at, I could also go for, you know, Ahsoka, Clone Wars stuff at the same time. It's just. To me, it kind of it it changes, you know, depending on budget mostly. Yep. <laughs> depending on budget, depending on what my brain thinks is the coolest Star Wars at the yeah. at the moment. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I will say uh, I've got this upcoming poll listed, which reveals a little bit of an ongoing focus for me. <gasps> BC, oh. here is our current poll. BC, <gasps> I just wanted to point Sneak out. Peak. If you want to find these polls, I don't think we've ever pointed this out. I had a commenter, uh, you know, point that out. Like, where are these things? Oh, right. <laughs> we never explained it. If you go to our YouTube page and go over to the community tab, that's where you'll find these polls. And go through and vote on all of them because eventually we'll do a, a poll update video. An all, an all polls special or something, you know? They're ongoing. They're still available. Yeah, we're really good at not being great at the i think you know like not being helpful <laughs> knowing how to promote things the right way or but hey, we're doing our best you know we, we appreciate those of you who are, who are sticking with us as we're learning you know? yeah yeah we do i mean just a reminder everybody we make zero dollars from the show <laughs> and we do spend a strange amount of time on it for yeah. how unprofessional it is <laughs> like a shocking amount of time yeah um <laughs> But uh, this this current poll is recommended to us. Uh, I really should have pulled that commenter's name. I forgot. Uh, Swagaholic. <laughs> Swagaholic. Thank you, BC. Yeah. I thought this was a great poll recommendation. I altered the 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 format a little bit, but uh, for numbered Star Wars cards, do you place a higher value on Alpha and or Omega cards? Alpha cards being the first card produced on that serial number run, and Omega cards being the last and me personally, BC, I'm an Omega Man. I mean, I'm nothing Ooh. like the Omega Man, the <laughs> 1970s, whoever it was, movie. Uh, the I, I forget. Think you're actually, I think you're exactly like <laughs> exactly the Omega like Man. Like <laughs> <I>. <laughs> uh, um, can't remember his name, but that's an adaptation of I Am Legend, I believe. Uh, oh, nice. Novel. Anyway, one of many. But yeah, I like Omega cards, BC. Yeah, I, I I will say I don't I don't really have a preference. Like, like I don't prioritize one over the other. I do value them slightly different for some reason because our brains are dumb and like yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sixty seven of ninety nine is is the exact same scarcity as the ninety nine of ninety nine, but it does fetch a premium. So I also do buy into that. So it's 
I've got the one of ten. Kanan controls the blast Ooh. from Chrome Legacy, which uh, I wouldn't have been sad if I had the four of ten, but I do like that I have the alpha. So yeah. I do place a little bit of a premium on it, but I I don't like focus on one or the other, you know? A little bit of extra spice, you know, on, on yeah. a nice card. I, I also love an alpha. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. That's exciting to yeah. me. I have oh, a couple of oh. those. But for me, what does it is the... There's something about the symmetry of the, the two numbers being the it's same. It's 100%. The yeah, fraction yeah. is complete. Yeah. It is when div- it when divided, it equals, you know, one, which is nice. The the perfect thing, though, is uh, that one of one is both Alpha and Omega. Wow. That's right. <laughs> yep, that's the one. <laughs> dumb I wouldn't know anything about brains. it, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Big, big dumb number brains. I'll say I also like they're just sometimes like some numbers, you know, an 88 out of 99, a 77 out of 99, a, a 50 out of a, a hundred like round numbers. My my yeah. brain will will certain cards I'll see on eBay and be like, you know what? That's an OK number. I'll put five more dollars <laughs> on that bid or whatever. You know what? I think that that works for my brain. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm interested to see what happens with that poll, and uh, that's where you can find them. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's our comment from the day. I believe mostly the second part, right, BC? Um, yeah. Uh, so what happened, or what do you think is the delay with the Tops now Ahsoka set? I remember the Mando set coming out regularly with the release of new episodes. I do see a new Star Wars card trader app event with Ahsoka digital cards releasing today, so I wonder if those will be the images from the Tops now set. That's a good question, BC. Ooh, boy, boy, do inquiring minds want to special after last night's episode where I was like, I would have immediately purchased a Tops yeah. now set of this, but the Tops either doesn't want to make money or they're just holding off for some reason that I can't understand. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know what's up, BC. We've said it before. We expected these cards to start coming out after the second episode. Um, yeah. uh, it's typically around the time they start doing that. I guess the first two air, and then after the next week's episode, they start dropping tops now, usually. At this point, wondering if it's ever going to happen. And if it does, yeah. maybe it'll come all at once, like they did with Vision Season 2. They'll just say, hey, here are all the episodes at once. Maybe that's easier on their printing schedule. Uh, it might be easier on their printing schedule, but it, it feels like it hurts my wallet more if they drop. Yeah, I mean, I know it, my brain knows it's the same price over time, but like spreading it out as opposed to buying eight sets at the same time for one hundred and sixty dollars, uh, yeah. as opposed to the weekly, the weekly cadence is kind of. Uh, kind of a bummer if it even happens That's... right like if if it even occurs i think it's a positive sign that the the card trader app is is doing that but i don't know i i know a lot of people have been asking about it but we just don't have any any info which is a bummer so the card trader app uh is an interesting thing if you're unaware it's just like digital cards um uh you can get a lot of them for free you can also pay money for them you can trade digital cards it's basically like nfts that have existed since before they you know nfts were really a thing it's it's digital collectibles um i I, we tried it out for a while it wasn't for me we fooled around with it before people were watching this uh yeah (laughs) okay uh about a little bit. I I think we both kind of landed on. I was like, not really for us. I think this was around Kenobi Prime. When we were. Doing yeah, it. yeah. We because um, I remember going after those like weekly Kenobi sets. There's a definite chase element. There's a definite like, oh, if you put money into the app, you know, getting some stuff. I just uh, it wasn't 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 for me. I like having a card. You know? Yeah, I I liked I liked the experience. I just don't like being on my phone. Uh, so it was another yeah. thing of like, I don't need to be. Uh, personally, I don't want to be using the phone because I want my fingers on my Nintendo Switch <laughs> instead. Yeah, 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 but uh, I, I will say there are tons of cool images on that app that never make their way to card form. There are some cards that start as ca- paper cards and move over to digital cards. Yeah. So it is encouraging, but I can definitely see a world where they show up just in digital and we never see or hear about them again. There's been so much stuff on that card trader app where I'm like, oh boy, print this now. And they they don't. I mean, maybe they're just building the anticipation for the official, you know, hobby release of Ahsoka. So it's not like competing with something else. Again, pure speculation. 
but I feel like they'll definitely release the hobby hobby version and retail version of Ahsoka at some point, like they have done with the other shows, except for Andor, which of course we're not bitter about. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Still, still kind of a mystery. But I, I, I was clamoring for some some tops now after last night's episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was that was a fun evening for someone who yeah. hadn't been super hot on Ahsoka until yeah. now. You see, speaking of Ahsoka. We got some goodies from your PC right here. From the PC, I want to highlight. I, I have acquired one of my a Grail level cards, which is the the living set. Uh, when I first started getting into Star Wars and collecting, this was one of the first ones. I was like, "Ooh, I like that." Uh, and then the prices for just a raw version were not friendly to me, so yeah. uh, didn't get around to it. Ended up working a a, a trade. Uh, with JB trading cards uh, to get this into the the perm collection, uh, so super stoked to have a PSA Jim Mint ten of that. And I'm, I, I know you've previously highlighted the card garden. Everyone gets to kind of see it in the background too. Mine's Way a little farther back there. here. I've made a little upgrade this week to the card garden. I got some of these acrylic stands for my shelves here to to up the display game a little bit. So I wanted to I just wanted to like show that off as like a hey this is a good idea that costs i got they come in like sets of six and you can get different sizes to, for different shelves and stuff i got three sets of six i got two of the same size and i got one that's a little bit larger and they were like 10 12 bucks or something like that each on the horrible evil amazon website um but i went for it i needed more card storage stuff too so i also got some more boxes i was just like i'll just do it on one fell swoop uh, but I really like the way it like gives levels to my stuff. Um, it's a much more pleasant eye experience when viewing the collection. You see, this is beautiful. I, I love this card garden. I need some of these. And also, just look at that beautiful autograph collection. Look at it. It it just looks so nice. It it needs the. I think the only one I I want completed is is the matt lantern anakin and i oh, think oh yeah i think i think i'll be I'll, I'll be done i've got maul i've got obi-wan we've got the rebel crew we've got thrawn i've got a david Tennant in there of course um and then uh rex uh in there too so yeah it's uh i was that was a big focus for a while speaking of focuses and i got pretty much everything I've been looking for there. So that's always been, that's like, that's been the top shelf for a while. I think just that Matt Lanter is the last piece of it. Awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. And there, there's our boy Thrawn. Uh, yeah. Now realized in live action, they made the right decision with, yes, with keeping is. Thrawn, Thrawn. Uh, <laughs> that that very much appreciate so that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, BC, I got a little care package. Uh, oh. from friend of the show Sam Sams because I I have not been able to collect cards recently. Look at these beautiful cards, BC. We covered Those this of course in our our lovely. vintage set guide, but yeah. Yeah, they're they're more beautiful in person than I could have ever imagined. Uh especially the detail in that snow speeder. Um yeah. in person looks really good. But check this out. How nice is that? Beautiful PSA 7s and these are good looking sevens, BC. Uh, I was really impressed. They are well centered. Um, yeah, I I can great. hardly see anything wrong with them. They look fantastic. Great, great eye appeal on those. These are series two, I yes. believe, with that yes, blue the border. Start on there. of yeah. series two. Yeah, yeah. and uh, go check out our set guides if you're not checking those out. We we have gone through now. Return of the Jedi. Series one, we will shortly be recording series two uh, and moving on. But our, our original trilogy journey is almost over on our set guides. It is. It is BC. And then after that, we're already deep into research for our requested odds and ends kind of unofficial releases. And yeah. I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, those are cool. Really found some some wormholes to go down there. But yeah, check out that set guide to watch me talk about how much I love this Thai bomber card. And uh, yeah, huge thank you to Sam Sams. This made my weekend, BC. It was delightful to uh, have some slabs on my little shelf over here. She's a real beaut. They may they may move somewhere else around. I don't know, but uh, I definitely want this full set at some point. This is a beautiful start to my collection. Thank you. Um, and 
yeah, that's that's it for for the Cargo Bay BC. I'm oh glad this goodness. one's over. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know if this is uh, my best was... episode, BC. I'll say it. It wasn't. I'm disappointed. We'll have a discussion about it later. <laughs> <laughs> I may get fired from from the cargo bay this evening. Um, I'll talk so. to you about it later. I'll talk to you about it later. I said. <laughs> I'll do some edits. I'll do some edits. <laughs> Just leave leave it in the comments, everybody. <laughs> well, yeah, um, maybe maybe leave some comments of who you would rather host the show with PC yeah. than me. I am open Ooh. to just producing the show for sure. Oh no, or just replace both of us too. That's fine. Uh, Dreamcast, <laughs> do do like a Dreamcasting of the cargo bay. Uh, um, hmm. I'm going to say I would want, man, it's really a shame. Paul Rubens passed, um, George <laughs> Lucas, <laughs> George won, Lucas and obviously. Paul Rubens. <laughs> <laughs> what a killer combo. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, bye everybody. <laughs> hey, like, and subscribe. If you haven't already do really appreciate y'all being here. Uh, anything else, BC? Um, we're going to do that shoop thing and I'm going to get it good. All right, I'm ready. Here we go. Shoop. <laughs> that was truly more difficult than I even imagined it would be. <laughs> we, we nailed it.